Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pradhaps Anesthesia. In this video, we are going to focus on special endotracheal tubes, which are devices that help us deliver oxygen and anesthesia to our patients during surgery. From this video, you will learn about the different types of special endotracheal tubes, such as flexometallic tubes, uncuffed tubes, ray tubes, and more, and how they are used for various procedures. So let's jump right into the video. Special endotracheal tubes. Apart from the normal tube, there are some special types of endotracheal tubes. These tubes are designed for specific purposes beyond the basic function of airway management. Let's see about those special tubes one by one. Uncuffed endotracheal tubes. Endotracheal tubes without inflatable balloons known as uncuffed tubes. These tubes are commonly used for pediatric patients in situations where a tight or close fit isn't essential. These tubes offer easier sizing due to the absence of cuffs, reducing airflow resistance and avoiding cuff-related risks such as overinflation and pressure complications. However, they may leak air and have a slightly higher risk of aspiration, along with less control over ventilation. Ray tubes, or Ring Adair Elwin tubes. This tube is named after its inventors, Ring Adair and Elwin. Ray tube is manufactured with a specific bend or curve in its structure. This preformed bend facilitates surgery on head and face. Oral or South Polar Ring Adair Elwin tube. Instead of going straight down like regular tubes, it's bent at an angle. The end of the tube rests on the patient's chin. the connector on the chest, and the top end goes down the chin, away from the face. This setup makes it super useful for mouth, nose, or cleft lip palate surgeries. Nasal or North Polar Tube The nasal or North Polar version of the Ringadare Elwin array tubes are designed to curve upward, kind of like a smiley face, over the patient's forehead. This curved design takes away the pressure from the nose. There's also an oral version of the tube that's like a hat tilted on the chin with the connector down near the chest. This one is great for surgeries inside the mouth. Both versions come in different sizes and can have cuffs, little balloons or not. The main advantage is the curve of the tube which helps to place the circuit away from the surgical field. Flexometallic tubes. It is also known as spiral embedded armored, reinforced, wire reinforced. These are non-linkable, non-collapsible, and therefore are very useful for head and neck surgeries where acute flexion slash extension of neck is required. Flexometallic tubes combine rubber, PVC, or silicone with a strong metal or nylon spiral wire inside for flexibility and durability. They resist kinking and maintain shape. These tubes are used in head and neck surgeries, used in spinal surgery, used in surgeries in prone surgery. Flexometallic tubes are specifically used in surgeries for the head, neck, and spine. They stay flexible and don't kink, making them great for these delicate areas. Microlaryngeal tracheal surgery tube. Microlaryngeal and laryngotracheal surgery tubes, known as MLT and LTS tubes, are specifically designed for microlaryngeal surgeries. These tubes are smaller in size and come equipped with a cuff. During microlaryngeal surgeries, which focus on the larynx, voice box, and nearby areas, precision is important. The small size of these tubes is ideal for these delicate procedures, allowing for accurate placement without causing unnecessary discomfort or obstruction. These specialized tubes are a valuable tool for surgeons performing microlaryngeal surgeries, ensuring a clear and secure airway for the patient, while enabling the medical team to work with precision in the intricate structures of the larynx and trachea. Double lumen tubes. Double lumen tubes are special tubes used for situations where only one lung needs to be ventilated or isolated. The most common type is the Robert Shaw disposable DLT. These tubes have two separate passages inside them, called lumens. One lumen goes into the trachea for normal breathing 
while the other lumen goes into either the right or left bronchus. The naming of right-sided or left-sided DLT depends on which bronchus the second lumen goes into. For example, a right-sided DLT has its bronchial lumen in the right bronchus, while a left-sided DLT has its bronchial lumen in the left bronchus. This setup allows the medical team to control and manage each lung's ventilation separately during procedures where one lung needs special attention. Laser-resistant tracheal tubes. These tubes can prevent fire during surgery. Tracheal tubes made of plastic, silicone, or rubber can be easily damaged by laser beams, potentially leading to fires. Carbon dioxide, potassium titanyl phosphate, and NDAG lasers are common in surgical procedures, but they can ignite these materials more intensely in the presence of oxygen or nitrous oxide. Laser-resistant tubes, like those made from ceramic, metal-coated, or quartz materials, are designed to withstand laser energy and prevent fires. However, it's important to note that if the laser power is too high or the application time is prolonged, even laser-resistant tubes can catch fire, resulting in serious airway burns and inhalation injuries. Laryngotracheal Installation of Topical Anesthesia This technique uses a unique tube design with an additional small bore channel and small holes at the tube's end. By spraying anesthesia through these holes above and below the cuff, it helps patients wake up smoothly from anesthesia, reducing the likelihood of coughing in most cases. It is employed in procedures like laryngoscopy, tracheostomy, bronchoscopy, thyroidectomy, pharyngeal procedures, and upper airway obstruction surgeries. Tracheal tube with electromyogram monitoring. This specialized tube is designed to monitor the activity of the recurrent laryngeal nerve electromyogram during surgeries that involve the thyroid or procedures affecting the nerve. It features wire reinforcement and incorporates four stainless steel electrodes above the cuff. These electrodes are linked to a monitoring system. This monitoring helps safeguard the recurrent laryngeal nerve and ensure safer surgical outcomes, particularly in procedures where the nerve's function is critical, such as thyroid surgeries. And that's all for today. We hope you found this video useful. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching and have a great day.